eredetileg narcisztikus, aki gyerekkorában sérült, és ki az, aki megfertőződött, aki elkapta ezt? How do you know who's the real narcissist? Uh, the one who had some traumas in the childhood, or someone who developed later on later on in their life? We have uh, two types of narcissism. There's a narcissism that is reaction to early childhood trauma, and it's a post-traumatic condition. And I'm, my recent work is I'm attempting to shift the focus, shift the uh, reframe narcissism. This actually is not a personality disorder at all. It's a post-traumatic condition. So there is post-traumatic narcissism, which is the by far the most common type. And then, um, given highly specific life circumstances, for example, becoming a celebrity, uh, on these highly specific life circumstances, you can develop something called acquired situational narcissism. Acquired situational narcissism was first, first described by a professor in Harvard, Milman, and Milman suggests uh, studied rock stars. He discovered that rock stars become narcissistic. They had they haven't been narcissistic before, but the fact that they're rock stars made them narcissistic. So yes, you can acquire late onset narcissism, depending on your circumstances. But this kind of narcissism is more transient. We hope we don't know yet. <laughs> we think that it's more transient and it, it recedes when the circumstances change. We are not sure yet. It's a speculation. Um, the victim's narcissism, for example, is acquired situational narcissism. Okay. The circumstances create narcissism, which is indistinguishable from normal narcissism, from regular narcissism, but it's different because of the um, etiology, because of how the reason, how it was created, the reason for its creation. Narcissism is a defense. It was first described by Sigmund Freud in 1914 as a psychological defense mechanism, and it is the narcissistic defense. Later on, um, scholars like Melanie Klein and Winnicott and Bion and, and much later Lacan and others, they all describe narcissism as a kind of defense. It could be defense against many things. Each one thinks it's defense against something else, but it's still a defense. So of course a victim exposed to constant attack, constant abuse, constant negation and vitiation, constant criticism. Because a victim, a victim's narcissistic defenses would also be activated, normally. Because everyone has healthy narcissism. So the defenses are activated. If the defenses of the victim are activated on a regular basis, the victim becomes a narcissist, technically. Because the narcissist is a person whose narcissistic defenses are constantly activated because of early childhood trauma. So, if the victim's defenses are constantly activated, then the victim is indistinguishable from the narcissist. We even have documented situations where victims become psychopaths and are indistinguishable from psychopaths. And today we think that CPTSD, complex post-traumatic stress disorder, which is indistinguishable which is the outcome, I'm sorry, uh, of pr prolonged narcissistic abuse. We, today, the, the orthodoxy, the, 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 what we teach in schools and so on, is that it is e exact equivalent of borderline personality disorder. Mm -hmm. So victims who develop CPTSD become effectively borderlines. Mm -hmm. And they have dysregulated emotions, lability, abandonment, anxiety, and so on and so forth. Now, one of the major dimensions of borderline is narcissism, of course. We, we diagnose borderline, the tests that diagnose borderline have a, a segment which is about narcissism. All borderlines are narcissistic. So here's another example where CPTSD is the same like borderline, and borderline to a very large degree is the same like narcissism. Mm -hmm. So narcissism is contagious. It spreads like infectious disease. 